One points, 11 rebounds, five assists, three blocks, two steals. That 2010-5, oldest player in NBA history to have that stat line in a playoff game. It just continues. Here's LeBron. Just the, what's different about playoff games when you, you two get out there, and specifically for tonight's game, AD defensively, uh, what did you see there? Um, I mean, obviously we had great chemistry, and, um, you know, in the postseason, obviously, you know, um, every possession is very important, and you got to dial in and understand the assignments, things of that nature. So we've had pretty good success as, 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 a, as a combo, and we want to try to continue that. You know, um, but tonight, you know, um, you know, it was. Our, our supporting cast that, that won us the game tonight. And, I, and obviously, AD set the tone defensively with those seven blocks and just changing shots at the rim, taking charges, things of that nature. Uh, but our, our supporting cast definitely brought us home. You said pretty early on that Austin had earned your trust you know, for sort of obvious reasons for you. Uh, but how did it get to the point of tonight's that rhythm that he got in? And what were you guys going to? And, and what was the what was the focus there? Um, um, we trust him with the ball in his hands and early in the game and late in the game. So. We got some going in the fourth quarter, and after every stop, or, uh, we didn't get a stop or whatever. I think uh, uh, Jaron Jackson won like a 5-0 run by himself when we went up seven. Uh, we went back to AR um, and, and just uh, put the ball in his hands. He was able to hit a pull-up two, um, um, you know, able to hit a, a three when he kind of had a soft switch, and then hit another pull-up two to kind of put us put us up eight. So uh, he closed the game for us offensively. LeBron, you guys weren't as sharp as you had been over the kind of the final last week of the regular season into the playing game. And Austin told us that, well, he had a feeling that the level of play w would look a lot better from the group, starting with you and AD addressing the team on Thursday and kind of talking about locking in. As much as that message um, that you could share, could, could you tell us something about like what you were trying to tell the group about setting the tone for this playoff run? Um, I mean... Listen, we've kind of been in like desperation, you know, kind of playoff mode for about two months now because uh, we, we just we didn't really have much room for error to lose games or whatever the case may be if we wanted to put ourselves in a position to play right now. But, <clears throat> you know, when the playoff starts, it's even more dialed in and understanding, you know, assignments, not making mistakes. You know, um, you know, we can't have, um, you know, multiple possessions where we're not running back on defense or you know, we turned the ball over, and obviously, you know, uh, me and AD had the majority of the turnovers tonight. So um, even when we turn the ball over, we got to get back and set our defense. But offensively, defensively, we got to be just, you know, be as, as, as dialed in as, as you possibly can for 48 minutes. And I thought the guys definitely um, understood that assignment and, and, and were really good tonight. But I think we could be even better. LeBron, uh, Rui tied the, the Lakers record for most points uh, off the bench in a playoff game. How, how important was he tonight and just the, the time, kind of the timely shots that he hit as well? Uh, I mean, it speaks for itself. Um, he was huge. Um, like you said, he had timely shots. They made runs in the third quarter. You know, he had two threes in a row. You know, they made another run, you know, in the fourth quarter. He had another three off of AR, pump fake drive behind the back pass. He also had a, um, a beautiful turnaround baseline ju uh, jumper uh, by a bench. Um, but he was just on time, on target all night tonight, and we needed that, um, you know, especially coming off the bench, um, especially as, as well as their bench is. You know, they got so many great players to come off their bench. So we was able to counter that with Rui's big game. LeBron, uh, you know, Hachim speaking of Hachimura, he's talked a lot about just, you know, your words and what they've meant to him in terms of just building his confidence. Uh, obviously, he's like a really respectful kid. What what have you found just about trying to like unlock that thing in him? Like what what is it? How have you been able to kind of get him to the point where he could have the kind of performance he did tonight? And also just how happy were you for him? Um, I think that's just part of my leadership, being able to, um, you know, find what sparks every individual to try to reach their potential. Um, you know, and um, you know, the same with Rui. Um, you know, I, I, I see. The type of player he can, the type of player he is, we can, can become, you know, um, you know, and I just try to stay in his ear, um, give him positive motivation, give him positive messages, let him know how important he is to our team, and uh, in order for us to reach the goal that we want to reach, um, he has to be a huge part of that. So, um, and he wants to be, you know, he's asked me multiple times, "What can I do to help the team win?" You know, um, you know, and I just I tell him exactly what I think he can do. You know, and you know, it's not about making shots. You know, that happens. You know, you can make shots, you can miss shots, whatever the case may be. But his his um, his presence alone, his I mean, his size, his athleticism, um, his um, you know, it just brings another dynamic to our ball club. And 
You know, it's um, something that we didn't have early in the season when we had this type of length. You know, now with, with Vando and myself and AD and Rui, we got a lot of length out on the floor. So it definitely helps us be a complete team, and he's a, a really good player. I can't tell you everything. I just, you, you, have, to, you have to pay attention. That's all. As a, you have to pay attention on a day-to-day -day basis and know every, every individual is different. So you have to try to f figure out how you can get the most out of every individual and, and it, it's different ways. I think, I think it comes from being a father, I think, too. You know, having three kids, I understand that, you know, I, I got to, you know, parent my kids differently to get the best out of them. Some of them I can yell at, some of them I got to comfort, be more comforting, kind of, you know, some I need to pull away to the side and some I can yell in front of the, the group and they be fine with that. So. I think, I think that helps. Hey, LeBron. Um, I apologize if you've been asked a version of this, but <clears throat> it's hard to think of a, a fourth quarter. I mean, I know AD got a couple dunks down the stretch, but a fourth quarter where I think the two of you guys had taken only two field goal attempts for the big chunk of that. Um, what does that say about the trust level that you've developed with Austin, um, Rui, D'Angelo, like these guys, even though it's, a, I guess, still a moderately new group, like, it, it felt like you really trusted those guys down the stretch? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we found something that was going. I mean, it's an old saying, if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So, you know, um, you know, you know, we, AR was able to see a couple shots go in and we ran that pick and roll, the double pick and roll where he was running it. D-Lo said the first one, 80 clean up. And uh, first one he was able to reject, get a pull up two. Second one he came off, they had a switch, but they soft switch, he hit a three. Came back down, you know, he's able to hit another pull up. Um, another one, I was, you know, they sunk the, uh, shrink the floor on one of them on me. I was able to, he you know, came off, read it, read it uh, properly, kicked it to me. I was able to hit a three. Um, so it's just, um, you know, when you know that you're playing with cerebral guys and you know guys that got high basketball IQ, then you trust that they'll make the right play for the team. LeBron, with your postseason success, I don't want to make this bigger than it is, but to get this win on the road in a 7-2 series, um, especially you had said how well you guys were playing down the stretch, what's it mean for some of these young guys that don't have as much playoff experience? Um, I mean, it's, it's um, good to get a game under their belt, to know what the postseason is all about. And even if, you know, even if you've played one series or whatever, just to get back into the flow of things. And I think that's um, very key for our young guys. Um, it's AR's first playoff game. Um, so it's good to, to get that, um, you know, under his belt. Um, and a lot of our under our guys that's um, not as experienced in the postseason, it's good to get another postseason game under their belt so, to, so they know what to expect. But uh, we need to be um, um, a lot better in game two. Um, they're going to go back and they're going to counter. And I mean, we have 15 turnovers for 15 points. We can't do that. Um, we got to be a lot better. And that starts with me, obviously. Um, and we got to do a, a little bit better job on the glass as well, even though for the majority we controlled it, but we got to do even better because, um, you know, that's what they're very good at. So um, we're going to look at some things that we can do better and, and, and hopefully be, you know, even more uh, in tune on Wednesday. Last LeBron, for someone like you who's been a part of countless playoff games, what was it like for you just to watch? Someone like Austin in his first career playoff game, do what he did, and then for you as a leader, just you know, kind of run me through what the conversations have been like with Austin. Uh, leading up well, to it's this. not surprising to me. Um, I knew from the first practice that we had when we grabbed him that it wasn't going to be long. Um, he wasn't going to be a two-way player for long. Um, but then a couple of weeks went by. I knew he was going to get a guaranteed contract at some point. I just, I just know I've been around the game long enough to know great basketball IQ players. And I know the type of players that fit with my game. And um, and I knew Austin would be that right away. So, and you give a lot of, I got to give a lot of credit to Coach Vogel on just throwing him into the fire and let him learn on the fly and, and, and let, allowing him to make mistakes and allowing him just to play through a lot of stuff. Um, you know, so, uh, but I knew the, the type of player that we was able to get um, you know, in Austin, so it's not surprising what he's what he was doing tonight. Um, maybe to some of you guys who don't watch him as much or don't cover him as much, but for me, it's not. I'm extremely happy for him, and you know, I want him to do it again. Appreciate it. Thank you.